my name is Gary Trinder. I'm a Microsoft MVP, PMP team member. I'm here today to talk about how to speed up developer onboarding using Visual Studio Code um, remote development and also how that works with the <laughs> GitHub uh, code spaces. What we'll first do is we'll basically just go through what remote development actually means. Remote development actually means developing inside a container. In this um, scenario, it's a Docker container. Um, so what we're doing is we're creating an isolated environment where we can install all of our dependencies um, for our, our code to run in without actually having to install anything on our, on our main machine. That means if we've got multiple projects uh, using containers, we can swap between different containers, use different versions of uh, frameworks without having the headache of trying to manage um, uh, all of those uh, different versions on, on one system. The one thing that sets the Visual Studio Code approach, aside from just developing with Docker containers, is that the extensions within uh, Visual Studio Code allow you to uh, basically define your development environment alongside your code. So when you, you know, clone a repository, uh, you've got files within that project that will define the dependencies for you to be able to build, run, test, do anything that you uh, might need to do with, with that, that project. And that's a really powerful thing, especially with working in open source um, as well, because you go to a different project, it, everything's different, there's different versions, and it, it can become quite painful to get your machine ready to, uh, to actually develop against uh, some of these projects. So it's very easy to, to get started. So there's a, there is a very good tutorial. Essentially, the prerequisites are you need Visual Studio Code. You also need Docker installed on your, uh, on, on your machine. And you also need to install uh, a Visual Studio Code extension uh, called the Remote Containers, which makes all of this, all of this work. Uh, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to jump straight into to, uh, a scenario, really. Um, and I'm going to show you the scenario of, of how we are using Visual Studio Code remote development to really help with onboarding to the CLI for Microsoft 365 project. So, you know, we're an open source project. Like every other project, we have some build instructions. You can clone, you need specific versions of Node. That is the bare minimum. You can just build, you be able to contribute. But if you start to look at some of our guides, you actually need a bit more. So we actually use Python uh, for generating our uh, documentation. So that's another dependency um, that, that you need to install. Uh, we're also a project that uh, is cross-platform. We work on different shells. So it may be that you want to install PowerShell as well. Another thing you need to install. So what we've been doing is looking to use this technology to really simplify this, uh, this process. So I'm... On my machine at the moment, I'm actually using WSL2, um, but for the moment, just think of this as your, your desktop machine. If you're running on Windows, uh, you're running on Mac, this is your, your machine, you've got Docker running. I'll, I'll just show you that Docker is running on here. So there, Docker service is running. I don't have Node, which is needed for, um, uh, for development. I also don't have some of the package managers for, for, for Python either. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up our project. Um, so I've got the CLI already, already cloned down onto my machine. So there are the source files. Um, I'm going to open Visual Studio Code. So here is my project and I'm just going to call out there's a few extensions that I've uh, got installed. We've also seen down at the bottom that Visual Studio Code knows that there's a development environment within this uh, project that it's actually prompting me, oh, do you want to open it um, in that uh, development environment? And this is defined by these uh, files within the dev container folder. So we have a dev container.json file. This describes uh, our uh, basically our development environment. We can define its name, uh, the Docker 
contain all the build instructions, the extensions that we also want to use. So this is going even further and saying, well, actually, we're not even going to standardize the dependencies of our projects. We're actually going to uh, standardize the extensions that people can use as well. And we can pre-install those. So again, you, we, we're, we're trying to help you get up to speed uh, as, as quickly as possible. Um, we've also defining what shell to use and also when this image is built, we're actually going to run all of the install commands for you as well. So when all this is finished, you will literally just be able to run the code and be able to develop and be able to test and be able to run the documentation as, as well. So if I go to the doc file, so one of the things that we we have done here, um, so we're using a, a public image. We're actually using a, a PowerShell image because we want PowerShell to be bundled uh, for you to be able to, to use. And this is using uh, the latest version of Ubuntu. Uh, we're installing all of our dependencies. Uh, so we've got dependencies on Python and some other tools um, as well. Uh, we're installing our packages for uh, building our documentation, creating a specific user to uh, develop with and also we're actually going to customize the the shell and we're going to add extra features into the command line so that when you're using it you've got autocomplete for git commands and um, you've got a very good history you've got syntax highlighting so you know when you're going to execute a a command on the command line it's it's going to work if i look at the extensions um, one of the things that I said uh, was a dependency uh, was Docker to be installed. You also need the this package here, uh, so the remote containers. When you install this uh, extension, you'll find that there'll be a little icon like this down in the bottom left. That means that you're kind of ready for, for using uh, remote development. So that needs to be in, installed first. So by installing that, it also gives us options in the in the command palette that we can open. And I can then say, I want to reopen this project in the container. So now it's opened a new instance of Visual Studio Code. And we can see that it's starting the dev container. So in here, you can see there are tons of instructions that are happening. So what it's doing, it's just checking that Docker is actually installed on the machine. And then it's going to start and instruct the build for the uh, for the image. Of that warning. There we go. So that has built my image, and I'm now running in a remote container. So I'm going to open my terminal. I'm using the uh, Z shell prompt. You can see that my prompt now has completely changed from what I had before on my machine, which was this. Um, oops, I just moved back. Go back to my terminal. Uh, I can now see that I have my version of Node. I can run commands, so I can run the watch. Oh, he says that was not a very good example. <laughs> oh, this is where the demo gods are getting me. And every time I did this before, it was working. It doesn't matter how many times you try. It's always oh. the live and production when it actually fails. That's happening. It is. It is. <laughs> so we'll, we'll just let that run and then hopefully. There we go. So the install just didn't quite run on that one. Um, but that one's running. Um, I can then uh, also open a new window. I can run my docs. MK docs serve. Uh, so you see that little feature there is the syntax highlighting. So I know that MK docs is, is in there. You can hit, uh, oh, if I actually go to the right, that'd be fine. That's now running. Uh, and when this r is running and it's building all our documentation, one of the things is we're running in a container. And obviously, this is going to build documentation, it's going to be a, a website. What a nice thing about this is, is it will automatically detect that the container wants to open a port and it will actually give you the option to say, are you happy with this? Um, and it will create a tunnel from your local machine through to the, uh, the service that is running within the container. A second. 
when it gets to that. We've got a lot of docs, <laughs> I will add. So it's probably churning through quite a bit. So as, as it's doing that, just to kind of yep. over uh, simplify things for those who don't quite understand what is a Docker and everything else. So this is kind of a virtual machine, which is then being set up for development without anybody installing anything to the host machine. Is that the right way of putting yes, it? Yes, pretty, pretty much. Yeah, it, it's, it's basically a, you, you're running everything on one host. Uh, rather than having multiple virtual machines and then deploying code to them, uh, Docker is providing you with that space, that um, yeah. isolated area for you to put uh, your source files and, and dependencies. Um, so there we go. Uh, it's basically exposed that the port is now open. So I can actually now see our documentation and that's running from here. If I make any changes, I can then just refresh the page and it's there and it's running. Um, but I've, I've not had to then go through the pain of trying to configure what Python version I need, what dependencies I, I, I need for, for this to run as well. Um, I'm sure if anyone's tried to install Py different versions of Python on, on one machine, it's an absolute nightmare. Um, so this makes it a hell of a lot easier. Um, this to, is a family to... show, Gary. Family show. Oh, not... sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so th there's a one question, uh, which is, is this virtual machine set up in Azure? No, it's actually a virtual machine or a isolated virtual machine locally in the developer's box. But yeah. the beauty of this one is that now if you have multiple different projects and multiple different customers, and some of them require NPM, whatever version, and some of them require a different setup of installations, you can isolate the setup and environments in Docker. Um, and having this Visual Studio code and, and the Git, uh, GitHub integrations, and which will basically, it, it makes it easier for people to get started than in a GitHub projects. So the project can define that these are the basic setup and configuration environment of variables and installations to get started. And poof, yeah. voila, your environment is ready to go. It, it's exactly that. Your other op op option is to have multiple versions of Node installed on your host machine. Um, by using NVM, um, which you know, uh, David is going to be, uh, uh, David and Hugh are showing here how to do that in their code is sharing. This is just a, a different approach. Um, interestingly, to take your point about, is this running in, in Azure? No, that was running on my local machine. Yep. To take this a step forward, using the same technology, GitHub Code Spaces, which is currently in preview, is essentially going to use this development environment definition that's in the project and allow us to have a one-click uh, set up for development environments. So as a contributor, you can just come along to the project and hit a button and it will build everything for you. So here I have a, a branch that has um, my dev container files in here and where I'd usually come to actually clone the repository, I've got an option of opening code spaces because uh, I, I signed up to the um, the preview and I've already got one pre uh, created here so I can click this and this is creating the container but in a machine uh, I think it will be in, in Azure but completely remotely so I could be using an iPad for this with just a web browser and I'm able to effectively create my development environment within a browser and have a, the same experience as if I am running locally so I've got Visual Studio open um, albeit in the browser. Uh, it's checking out all of the code uh, from the repository. It's also built all of the dependencies as well, um, or included those in the uh, uh, in the code space. And if I remember rightly to open my terminal prompts, I have exactly the same terminal prompt. I can run the npm watch. Oh, now npm run watch. I can start our docs. So that's going to build the docs. And in the same way that it, it opened a port on my local machine, so I could access it locally. Because I'm running in GitHub Code Spaces, it's actually going to create me a, a, a website. It's going to create me a URL, which then I can access the same documentation, but completely remotely. And what's the cost related on that? 
So the cost at the moment on preview is it's free. Once it's out of preview, it's going to be cost per usage. Um, so it'll be based on how many code spaces you want to create and use. Uh, different prices for different specifications uh, of code spaces as well. Uh, I don't think there's many details around that. But the, the one thing I like about this is that by using remote development locally, even if you've not got code spaces at the moment, you can still benefit from the isolation of working uh, in this kind of, of way. It just makes things a lot easier to handle your, your dependencies. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Are we are we good, Gary? We are uh, good. Yes. Excellent. So really cool. And the basic idea of this one is is behind well the, the larger way of thinking this is that in a click of a, a click of a button in the internet browser, you can set up a VM or an isolated, it's kind of a VM, but it's not VM, but it's a virtualization in the cloud, which has everything but needed for development. So nobody has to install anything locally. And that's just mind blowing because you can just move between the projects, regardless of the project dependencies, with the click of a button and you'll say something else. That's really great. It's it's a really innovative way of doing things. And obviously, let's see when this will catch in the community as well. Mm -hmm.